today we'll go we'll be going over the number third most popular programming language in the world a lot of you might have differing opinions than this particular ranking but uh, more than likely uh, uh, there would be a broad number a broad, broad number of sources that would agree upon the, uh, agree that the, more, the third most popular language currently in 2024 is java when we talk about java we need to understand that it has be, it is the one of the most widespread and most efficient programming languages out there the reason uh, being that it has many benefits and perks that help programmers solve complex real world problems at very quickly java has also helped develop various softwares in the past and still continues to help in development uh, of multiple uh, programming projects today so the question is uh, in this video why should we learn java in 2024 and that is because george will take up take up the first point yeah the first reason that you should learn uh, java in 2024 is that it's a more simple uh, programming language uh, that that is being com that is a compiled language um, such as c and c++ um, java comes with a really well, with a more readable syntax um, which is more straightforward, like like the English language. Um, also, it removes a lot of the features like pointers, structures, uh, unions, and stuff like that. Um, that's associated with uh, like uh, programming languages like C and C++. They also have a rich standard library, which is a pretty comprehensive uh, standard library for simplifying development and et cetera. So there's a lot of things that um, a lot of abstractions that uh, Java has that really makes it a lot more simpler than C and C++. And I'll let Muhammad take the next point. The second reason why you should learn Java in 2024 is because Java is an object oriented programming language. As we all know, one of the main most important advantages of Java is that it's an object oriented language. And this build uh, builds upon the, the point number one that George does just, you know, uh, discussed. Uh, that Java is, is a language that abstracts away a lot of complexity, right? And uh, object-oriented programming concept may, has made Java much easier to implement and much more secure. It helps us uh, conceptualize real-world problems and break them down into smaller fragments uh, and hence making it more easier to implement uh, 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 solutions to real-world problems, uh, basically. With that, we'll move on to point number three. Point number three is that Java is a secure language. Um, the reason is, um, more specifically, one of the main reasons is that, you know, programming languages like C and C++, who use pointers, they they allow access to the actual memory location of the object. Um, in Java, they they have a they have an abstraction over that which pretty much hides it. I won't get into the the minutia of it, but it, it 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 really helps in terms of security. Also, they have byte they have bytecode verification. They also have sandboxing. Um, like they have a um, it's called I won't I won't go into it, but they they allow sandboxing. Also, they have uh, automatic automatic memory management. They have a, a litany of secure AP of security APIs that that help uh, in terms of you know you know just making the 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 language more secure so that hackers just can have their way with you with the uh, with your programs and with that i'll let muhammad take the next point the fourth reason why java is a good choice for you to learn in 2024 is because java is a very cheap and uh, is a language that uh, when used to develop programmer programs those programs are very cheap and economical to maintain and the reason for that is java is a has a very simple build uh, Java can run on any machine regardless of the hardware of system, which reduces the cost of development significantly and which also makes sure that you can create softwares in the most high end of the machines. Uh, and uh, one uh, and on the other side of the spectrum, you can have software built on not so high end of machines as well. So it, it's, it's a overall a very, very uh, flexible language in terms of the requirements it needs to run and which makes it cheap and economical to create software on. With that, we move on to the next point. The next point is that Java is platform independent. Um, they have a feature called write once, run anywhere. We won't get into the, the, the details on that on this particular uh, video, 
but pretty much, I mean, Java programs, um, you know, in this particular system, you can run them on any other system, basically. They also have a uh, bytecode execution, which uh, allows uh, Java code to be compiled in a platform neutral uh, bytecode. Uh, Java also has um, a, job, a thing called a JVM or Java virtual machine. And basically that just abstracts the underlying hardware from the operating system, which, uh, which is very helpful. Also, Java has, a, they have consistent um, like APIs, um, like a standard um, API library um, that, 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 that's highly leveraged across the community. Um, and in addition, the last point I want to make is that it's, uh, it, 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 it really, um, there's a lot of features within Java that just really help in terms of cross-platform development. Again, like the, the, the right ones run anywhere um, to allow it to, 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 uh, to be deployed, uh, you know, amongst multiple platforms without any recompilation. And with that, I'll let Muhammad take the next point. So Java is a high level programming language. So let's just break that down a little bit. Basically, what we mean is that it's a human language. It's very, very similar to the English language with a few syntaxes that are simple and easy to remember. So basically, it's as near to the language we humans speak. So the syntax and there's few syntaxes that we need to remember, which are simple and easy, basically. So basically what that means is a high level programming language is much easier to learn and understand the fundamentals of and, you know, start, uh, you know, immediately st start, uh, start programming in that language is very, very quick and simple based on just this premise. Basically, Java has an interpreter that interprets the code to machine language code for the machine to comprehend. And that is basically how, how, how a high level language works. But the core thing to take out of this conversation and this particular point is that when you, if you start learning Java, it's a very, very uh, popular language among enterprise software development. And uh, it's and it's easier to learn compared to C and C++, which is much more, um, you know, much more complicated compared to Java. With that, we'll move on to the next point. The next point is that uh, Java supports portability. Um, you know, back once, which is which is here again, it's the right ones run anywhere. And again, you know, that allows Java to run on any device. Also, Java is uh, is pretty platform neutral, which which allows it to run on multiple platforms. Um, another good point uh, regarding this portability is that it can run on pretty much, pretty much it, it, it the, the fact that it that it abstracts the hardware specific details. It can run on multiple hardwares. It can also um, you know work on different GUIs, different APIs. You know, so it, there there are not a lot of restrictions on this particular language, which is a good thing. And with that, I'll let Muhammad take point number eight. Um, point number eight is very simple. JavaScript provides automatic garbage collection. What do we mean by that? So basically, generally speaking, in very, very fundamental languages like C and C++, memory, um, computer memory is basically occupied uh, by your program. Obviously, you know, you're setting up a program. It needs to occupy some memory to run and, you know, work. So. Generally speaking, in very, very fundamental languages like C and C++, you had to allocate memory and then you had to deallocate memory as well. Otherwise, you'll just allocate all of the memory and you won't have any resource left in your computer to basically uh, run the program any further. So basically, you had to allocate and deallocate memory. And you had to manage this process as a programmer yourself, basically, when you're writing this code. But, but the good thing about JavaScript is the JVM, in JavaScript automatically does all of this for you. You don't need to do anything like that. You don't need to write any extra code and it automatically does this. It also uh, automatically does garbage collection and garbage uh, values is something that basically um, is a whole uh, slew of, of a, a whole another topic, uh, but it's an interesting um, uh, topic nonetheless, but we'll cover that in another video. So with that, we'll move on to the next Point. All right, the next point is that Java supports multi-threading. And, you know, a thread is basically the smallest pop possible unit that could be processed. 
Um, in layman's terms, multi-threading just really helps to simply, like for example, let me give you an example on this one. Pretty much you, you have 10 different processes that you wanna run. And so instead of running them synchronously, one by one by one by one by one, you know, uh, you can use like a, like a concurrent library, java.util.concurrent, and you're able to open up concurrent threads at the same time, which also uh, saves on processing power. Um, it allows um, thread pooling, um, which helps with the, you know, pretty much create more, more efficiency around the management of multiple threads that you're opening up. But I won't go into too much detail about that. I mean, all most languages have uh, multi-threading utilities, and it's really, really helpful in terms of resource um, uh, preservation. And with that, I'll let Mohammed take the next point. Uh, the next point that um, uh, and the reason, the tenth reason you should learn Java in 2024 is Java is a very, very mature and stable language. Java receives regular updates to remove bugs. Uh, it uh, Java, uh, and it's one of the most uh, and that is one of the reasons that it's one of the most stable languages out there because it's been out there for a long time and these regular updates have pretty much make them made the language very very robust and stable in handling all types of situations almost all bugs are removed immediately through updates and that is why it is important to update java regularly but that will move on to point the next point the next point is that Java is a distributed language. Well, you know, it, you know, it, it 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 allows, you know, for this language to be distributed uh, across multiple environments, multiple platforms, and et cetera. Uh, one thing is that Java it supports uh, sockets using, um, you know, standard libraries like, you know, um, well, standard libraries, but it also supports TCP/IP, which is very important uh, when you when you get into development. Um, also, it's platform independent um, network protocols. Um, they work really well with other platforms and etc. Also, Java has a, a message service, which allows messaging, you know, through different components of the JMS. So it, 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 it's really set up and made to work nicely with different uh, architectural systems. And with that, I'll let Mohammed take on the next point. The 12th point regarding why you should learn Java in 2024 is that Java provides a, an efficient memory allocation strategy. And I think I mentioned this previously as well uh, in reference to the garbage, automatic garbage collection that JavaScript does. So JVM not only collects garbage automatically, it also allocates and deallocates memory automatically, making it very, very efficient um in uh, in, uh, in, in making you very efficient in when you're writing code because you don't need to write extra code to allocate and deallocate memory the java jvm in java does that automatically for you but that will move on to the next point the next point is a pretty uh, simple point um the, the good news about java is that they have a massive community um supporting um the particular language we they have a large developer base so you have a bunch of different people uh, globally that are that are helping to knowledge share and etc. Uh, there are a lot of active active forums uh, like QA sites, Stack Overflow, Reddit, Java communities and etc. You know, just to kind of exchange information. So it's not like one of these smaller languages where you know that don't have that that level of support. And also there's a lot of uh, open source uh, contributors uh, for Java, um, you know, that provide rich e ecosystems of open source projects and et cetera. Uh, so I would say, you know, the community around this is is, is, is is pretty significant. And with that, I think I'll let Mohammed wrap it up. Um, in conclusion, what we need to understand is that Java is a very, very versatile and powerful pro programming language. And it offers a much, multiple advantages as we have covered in, in the video up till this point. Um, ultimately, it also has its fair share of challenges. In uh, all in all, uh, to uh, to decide whether you should learn Java in 2024, you need to first decide what specific uh, specialization, what specific um, uh, thing you need to take out of a certain programming language. And that would help you uh, decide which language you want to learn. But if you want to go into enterprise programming, professional programming, Java is a very, very good option for you to learn in 2024.
with that we wrap our video and we'll see you in our next one thank you thank you